Well, you heard right there from Rena Roy, we could be just days away from those COVID vaccines being given to the young kids. So we want to welcome right now, welcome back, SUNY mm -hmm. Offstate Pediatric Infectious Diseases expert, Dr. Joe Domikowski. And Dr. Domikowski has been part of the Pfizer vaccine trial for the youngest age group. Joe, good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. Um, we have covered this several times with you. Let's do it one more time. Your level of confidence in the safety of these vaccines for the youngest age group. I know you know Pfizer the best, but I'm sure you can opine on, on Moderna as well. Look, I just spent eight hours listening <laughs> to the vaccine advisory committee meeting, and I am, I am confident that these vaccines are safe down to six months of age. The data are overwhelmingly in favor of safety. We need a little bit more um, efficacy data, I think, before uh, FDA approval type thing could be considered. Mm -hmm. But certainly authorization based on safety and preliminary effectiveness is warranted, as was voted uh, today unanimously by both um, for, for both the M Moderna and the Pfizer vaccine. All right, so confident it's safe. And what about effectiveness? How much can you tell us about that, what you know of it? Well, the effectiveness data from both of the clinical trials down to six months of age really are limited by the fact that the trials were ongoing during the peak of the Omicron activity. Mm -hmm. And so what was initially observed and really resulted in the delay in the meeting that happened today was that it didn't appear that the vaccines were as effective as we would like them to be against Omicron. Well, uh, more time has passed. We've gained more um, information as far as longer term protection against the Omicron variant. And it's clear that both Moderna as a two dose series and Pfizer as a three dose series do the job. Um, and you kind of touched on a little bit there, Joe, but let's go a little bit deeper as to how well these vaccines um, do marry up with the current variants. And if you had a crystal ball, I guess what, what may be to come, because hopefully these last the kids for um, several months now. Yeah, I expect there will be um, boosters. Hmm if you will, in, in the futures uh, of all of the kids. And really some of the boosting activity in the clinical trials for the adults do already include a Moderna formulation that has a, a mRNA that's um, slightly different so that it uh, addresses the differences in the Omicron variant compared to the original Delta variant. Let's tackle the challenge that awaits. Mm -hmm. It's taken long, cases are lower, people are over COVID. How do we get the kids vaccinated and why does it matter? Let let folks, let parents know right now. Right, we're exhausted, right? This has been an exhausting series of, of activity. Everyone's developed COVID fatigue. Um, this, is, this infection is not going away. We may be in a lull, but we're gonna be seeing this infection going forward on a regular basis. Hopefully, eventually, much more like influenza from year to year, but we've been vaccinated against influenza for decades, and we still have to, to deal with it every, um, every season. So I think we're going to be coming to a point where uh, COVID-19 is very similar to that with the, the change in the variants uh, implicating changes potentially in the formulation of boosters. So don't be surprised if you hear more about that going forward as well. Joe, you're, you're the expert. You're the doctor, the scientist. I've heard parents trying to time vaccines. Like if I wait a little, it gets me through the summer or to school or fill in the blank, whatever. What's your advice on this unscientific timing of vaccinations? Just go get it as soon as possible. What would be your advice be? Absolutely. You want the primary series right now if you yeah. haven't gotten it already um, or as soon as it's available. Um, the boosting effect may, may be a bit of a different story as far as timing those out. We've certainly learned a lot about boosting um, um, elderly individuals mm -hmm. with influenza vaccine from year to year. Uh, but for, for children, there's really no reason to wait. When they develop responses to these vaccines with, from the primary series, uh, then we know we've established their their immunologic baseline, their sort of library of protection, and we can boost it later. So don't wait to, to get the vaccine in the first place. Complete the primary series now. Got about a minute left. We're just getting these vaccines. Looking ahead, what's development look like for the next one? Yeah, I think that's gonna depend on the variants that uh, emerge, not just in the US, but across the world, and vigilance and surveillance are ongoing all the time. We hear about uh, variants when they pop up in South Africa or in Europe. Um, so given enough time because of the way these uh, the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines are formulated, changing their composition similar to the way we change influenza vaccine composition from year to year hmm. is, is uh, something that can happen within the period of months. It won't take years. 
Dr. Joseph Demikowski from SUNY Upstate, uh, we always appreciate your time, especially after sitting through eight hours of that uh, FDA advisory panel. It was worth today. it. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, I know you were um, quite involved with that, but thank you, sir. Always appreciate you being with us. You bet. Thanks for getting the word out.